Good afternoon. This is Pam from Follow Your Brush. And thank you for following me and following my brushes as I <laughs> traipse around everywhere. Uh, today, I wanted to share with you some of my new goodies that I've gotten. You know, I can't go long without buying something new. First of all, I got a new iPad. That's what I'm recording on, <laughs> so I can't show it to you. But my other iPad I'd had for several years, and it finally had just died, so I had to get a new one. Um, but it had lasted a long time. But that's what I do my recordings on, because I can prop it up on this uh, tripod contraption that I have. But in the meantime, while I was waiting, I did not sit idle. I purchased some new Agallo paints, which I absolutely adore. I bought a red palette. It's said a collection of warm reds, which came with a travel brush. It's a synthetic travel brush that fits in there. It's a size 10. Works quite effectively though. Um, and I swatched the colors here in my Painter's Color Diary. So I have a vermilion, a scarlet red, permanent carmine, alizarin crimson, ruby red, piatra rose, which is one of my favorites, and also granulates, ultramarine pink, quim magenta, which is the fashion color for 2023. See it everywhere online and on TV. Quint Violet, Ultramarine Blue, Dioxazine Violet, and Naturum, I guess I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, if I'm not, forgive me. This is also a beautifully granulating color. And then they sent me a dot card of Vivan, Vivan, Vivanti. And I, I'm totally butchering that. But anyway, that's the dot card they sent me. Then I got two other palettes of uh, colors. Uh, these are just six, a palette of six, and I like these especially, and I'll tell you why here in just a second. This one is the Indian Yellow, Scarlet Red, Perlene Maroon, Raw Sienna, Sap Green, and Deoxazine Purple. And that's, I can't pronounce that, Vendemia. This one is called Landscape Six, and it has Gold Ochre, Sap Green, Transparent Cerulean, Ercolano, er, Ercolano Red, Burn Umber, and Dioxazine Purple. So there are a couple uh, combinations, but I like these little ones because I can put my magnetic clip and sit right there on my sketchbook or wherever I'm painting and paint till my little heart's content. They make beautiful mixes, which I'm gonna show you here in just a second. The other thing I purchased, you can always tell when it's payday, I've got new goodies. Field Guide to Color. I saw this recommended on another YouTube channel. Uh, this is by Lisa Solomon, and I thought, this is really nice uh, because I'm really learning to mix my colors more rather than going straight from the palette, even though I did just purchase all these reds. I am learning to also mix my colors, <laughs> and it is quite fun, and um, it's quite an adventure. I love color, but in this book, it's not just a, a textbook in which she teaches you the principles of color and how to mix them. She also gives you ideas on what she calls color meditations and gives you ideas when you're just kind of at a block and you want to warm up a little bit and you're not quite sure what you want to do, she gives you ideas. And th and then she gives you a sheet next to it in which you can play. So I like that. I got one for myself and I got one for my daughter. She talks about um, the color wheel and making a color wheel with your own shades that you use most frequently. I saw someone say yesterday, um, on another video that everybody has their own personal palette. Sometimes it takes time to learn what you enjoy and which palette you might like. But um, there are colors that we gravitate to personally. And so it's kind of like a another extension of your personality, the colors that you like to choose. 
she's talking about how you mix your primaries and gives you an idea and you can make your own color wheel, which I thought was pretty cool. So this book is full of ideas, um, water ratios and pigments, how to use them, how to work with them and complementary colors. Not just learning about it, reading about it, but then actually she gives you pages to put it into action and you do your colors. Uh, so you have worksheets and you can play right in the book. So I thought that was fun and I'm actually looking forward to doing this more as I continue mixing colors. The other thing I purchased by the same author is called the Field Guide to Color. It's Well, it's an extension of that. The Color Meditation Deck. It's This is kind of an abbreviated form of the book where she talks about exploring your colors and how to understand them better, how to use them, warms and cools, and understanding your colors and your brushes, etc. But then for those days when you're just kind of don't really know what you want to do, she has what she calls this color meditation deck. And each one is an idea of how just to kind of get your day started and break through that block or sitting down and not knowing what to do. She gives you instructions on one side. This one's on a limited palette, two, three, or four hues. And then she shows you how to play with them. And it's just kind of like a warm up, just get you started. And any given day, you can just go through these and just choose something that you would like to do. Of course, besides drop them, which is what I'm doing. Um, and just follow her instructions for that particular day. And you've got yourself a nice warm up. Instead of sitting here thinking, I I don't know what I want to do today, I'm not inspired, this will give you something to play with until you get inspired. And so I like that as well. So let's play, shall we? And what I want to do is show you some of these colors and how they mix. And um, my, some of my um, colors that I got from A Gallo. This one is called Indian Yellow. A Gallo paints are handmade in Assisi, Italy. Probably already aware of that. If you have followed me, you know I've talked about them before. They're made with gum arabic, local resources for the pigments, and honey and rosemary essential oil. This is scarlet red. This is Paraline Maroon. All really lovely colors. They wet very easily. They only sell them once a month because they are handmade. And so they, um, you know, try some mixes here. So they sell out probably within about an hour, two hours when they go online, they sell once a month. But part of that is because they are handmade. So let's see if we can get a pretty orange here. Add some more water and some more of this Indian yellow. Here we go. So talk about color mixing. If we want to push that a little darker, we could add some of our Paraline Maroon. Let's do that on this side. Yeah, some more water. And see what shade we get on that side. We do the red. You can see they're quite pigmented. I don't need to add a whole lot. And my Paraline Maroon kind of got lost in the mix here, literally. There we go. That's a pretty, pretty shade. If you watch me, you know I like to play. That's a pretty shade. All right, let's go to the next row. This is raw sienna. All 
also very pretty. And a sap green. And then we have dioxazine purple. I have learned that just in my mixing time, playing with my mixtures, I'm putting this on wet on dry, obviously. I haven't wet the paper ahead of time. That the uh, purple and my green make a nice neutral. Let's do that. Let's put some green here and let's put some purple down here next to it. Work them together. And you're gonna see that makes a nice neutral. So an advantage of staying in one palette or a limited palette is that you'll have some unity when, into your paintings when you do that. Um, I'm sorry, we're doing this side. Let's do the raw sienna. And let's add some sap green. See what we get, what color we get with this one. So that's going to give us a pretty shade as well. So there's an advantage to having a limited palette uh, because then you can you can play and make more colors. Let's add this rossy enter to this violet. That's going to give us a pretty neutral shade as well. So this is kind of a landscape palette. Gives you lots of options. Let me do this one real quickly. This is a gold ochre. Gold ochre. Another sap green. So that's repeated in these sets. But that doesn't really matter because if I'm painting my gold ochre and my sap green and I combine these two, going to give me a different landscape color that I can work with different than my other one that I got with the other set. Pretty, pretty. This is the uh, transparent cerulean blue. I love this color. I love this color. Let's add our gold ochre to that and see what we get a nice look at that pretty green so by staying with that my limited palette what i'm learning is that i can do all kind of things it's a nice earth tone and then i've got burnt umber Another nice earth tone. Let's combine them together. And see the nice neutral that color that we get. So we can darken that. So I basically, you know, what I'm learning is I don't need a ginormous palette with tons of different colors because with these six, look what I'm able to do. Here's a nice neutral too. That's a beautiful color. It's not a pretty color. So I just want to give you an idea what I've been up to while I have been waiting for my iPad. <laughs> it has arrived, so I'm back. Um, so I'll be do sharing more videos. Um, I just wanted to show some new goodies that I've received, and I hope you're doing well. Thanks for following me and follow your brush. I know I have some new subscribers. Welcome, welcome. Uh, please like and subscribe and share it with your friends, and we'll just play. We play a lot here. Thanks again. Bye.